I'm the Simple Car Guy and in today's video I will show you how to upgrade your Ford Escape's entertainment system from this to this. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My little sister has been driving this car for a while now and it's finally time to modernize it for her. So I will be installing this 9.7 inch Android head unit that supports wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. As you can see this Ford Escape came with a tiny little screen in the back here so just adding an add-on with CarPlay was not an option. All right, so now let's take a look at what actually comes in the box. And I have laid everything out on the table here just to make it a little bit easier. So of course we have your replacement panel, which is kind of a big deal because a lot of other head units that I've seen for this car don't. This is not included and you basically have to figure out your own solution for you know getting into the dash and everything else. A lot of the tuned-in uh, head units just are a tuned in unit and then you have to figure out all of the other stuff yourself. So I really like that it comes with basically everything that you need and it's included and should be pretty good to go. Anyway, other than this uh, plastic piece that's gonna help us with the dash, you have your uh, wiring loom. So this is gonna be the power uh, cables. This of course plugs into the head unit and then some of it goes into your car's wiring loom. We'll figure that out once we take the dash apart. Of course, you also have GPS a few USB cables. So we'll probably route those out somewhere where it's easily accessible. You also have your RCA and uh, SIM card. So this is for a SIM card. You have an antenna adapter. You have this CAN bus decoder. So that way you don't get any codes on your dash. You have a couple antennas. These are probably Wi-Fi antennas. Another RCA cable. And here we have the main screen. So as you can see, of course, it's a vertical screen. You know, it's pretty large compared at least to my hand. We'll see how it looks in the car. And if we look on the back, here's all the connections that we need for the actual head unit and a couple of the connections that will go to the buttons here. So we're gonna be transferring that functionality to these buttons right there. And yeah, just looks pretty decent, feels solid. So I'm very excited to get this installed. Let's go back down to the car get this installed and see how well it works. All right, so of course we're gonna start by disassembling this entire piece of the dashboard. And to do that, we're gonna remove this first plastic piece on the very top. I'm gonna use this uh, plastic removal tool just to help me with uh, removing stuff without scratching anything, but this should pop off. It seems solid at first, but yeah, it just comes off. Probably using your hands is the easiest, but this does help you lever it up. And next we're gonna remove two screws. There's one here and one here. They are T25 Torx bits right here. Hard to see, but I can feel them under my fingers, so easy enough. Now this should come off. And here are the two little screws that I was talking about. Now we're gonna unplug it. There is a clip in here, so hold the clip down and it just pops off. And next we have a seven mil uh, screw. Before we pop it out, we have to remove this little plastic rubber mat. And there's two more under here. And now this whole piece should come out as well. All right. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer. Now we just have two more bolts right here or screws we'll see in a second the seven again seven mil looks like screws and i think that's pretty much the entire job right here all right and then we just remove this plastic right here gotta be careful with the vents because we of course are reusing them but it might be easier just to remove the whole thing together and now I'm just gonna plug this one connection that's in here. There it is, and the whole piece comes off. And finally, we have the actual head unit, so there's two more screws here at the top. And now we can just pull out the head unit. Of course, we have a few connections here in the back as well, so I'm gonna unplug them, just like that. Okay. This one, you gotta be a little bit careful. I would recommend using one of these trim tools to push back on, on this thing right here when removing. Okay, there it is. And done, the head unit is now completely removed. 
now we can install our new stuff. Woohoo! All right, so here's what's happening so far. We have a couple of uh, connectors that came from the head unit. We have the antenna. We have one connector right here that was for the screen. And we have one for the buttons. I think that's it. As a first step, I'm going to remove these air vents and transfer them to the new plastic cover that houses my head unit. Looks like they're just held in by these little uh, clips right here. So I'm going to use my trim tool and lever them back just like that. Okay, that one's out. Cool, both of them are out. I'm just going to grab my head unit and pop these in. So just gonna go back in like that after we plug everything up. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through all of the wires and see what matches up to plug in in here and then what matches up to plug in on this side. And that should be as difficult as it gets. All right, guys, so I brought you in a little bit closer to try and explain where everything goes. So here we go. On the left side, we have our 4G plus, 4G minus. So these are just two antennas right there. Two antennas, so we're gonna put those to the side. Next, right there, we have our GPS antenna. Okay, so that's right there. This is our standard antenna plug. Next, we have this one plug right here. That goes to a video in, which is gonna go to this plug, which is camera, which goes to this connection, which plugs in right there, okay? Then this plug also goes back to this CAN bus uh, decoder. So it's gonna know when we are in reverse in order to send the camera signal to over there. All right, the next two are just USB cables. These are just USB plugs, all right? This one I may not even need. Uh, so this card doesn't have any cameras other than reverse. So I will probably not gonna need any of this stuff because this is just AVN. You can do 360 video on this uh, head unit, which we might do in the future, but probably not now. And this is the SIM card adapter. So if you're not using any of those, you probably don't need any of this stuff right here. We can unplug it, but I'll probably just leave it in there so it doesn't get lost in, in, in case we want to add something in the future. All right, and then the next little plug is just this one right there with the two white wires. Those also go into this CAN bus. And then the next plug is this main one right here. This is our car's CAN bus information basically coming in. So basically after you configure all of this, then these three just plug into your car. It's gonna be this one, that one, and that one. And then you only have one plug left, which goes in here to control your emergency light and open and close the doors. Everything else just kind of plugs into each other because you can't really plug stuff in incorrectly since they are all different sizes, which is very nice. Um, one thing is just that you have to plug this yellow one into the yellow one. The only other thing is that if you have uh, side cameras, then you would plug these uh, RCA connectors into a set over here. And that would also add the 360 cameras, or you can just add separate cameras uh, through here. I think that's basically it. So let's uh, put it in the car, plug everything in, and turn it on, see what it looks like. Let's do some testing. All right, well, it turns on, so that's pretty good. The screen feels very nice. It's very easy to um, to use. Very responsive. Well, we know the speakers work, so that's a plus. All right, with everything tested and working, I spent a little bit of time connecting my uh, Apple CarPlay and things like that, and everything seems to work just fine. So now I'm gonna reassemble everything. Now is a perfect opportunity to route all those wires. Oh my God, I think it's finally in. All right, and finally we can install the finishing piece before removing this. That'll be satisfying.
Well, that looks good. This still works. This still works. And finally, we can take this off. And we are done. This display looks really impressive. It seems very high quality. They did say it's a QLED and it definitely looks like it. So yeah, I'm impressed with that. Looks great. And just like that, I'm connected to Apple CarPlay as well. I'm using the same phone to film as I am using for the CarPlay. So it's gonna be a little bit uh, slow when I like scroll through because it's doing multiple functions at the same time. But otherwise it seems very fast and works great. So of course we can play something. And the cool thing is that the steering controls are also working. So if we just look down a little bit right here, kind of keep it like that. So as you can see, here's the volume control and it's working very nice it has been a week since i installed this unit in the car so now it's time for a quick review let's start with the rear view camera i'll be honest i didn't read the instructions so i didn't know how to configure the rear view camera since these cars have different camera options you have to select the one you have in your vehicle i'm happy to report though that i contacted support and they were super helpful and quick to respond with instructions. Here's how you actually do it. So you just go to settings, then you go to uh, factory settings, you type in your password, which is gonna be 888 by default, and then you go in and what you see here is a ton of different things that you can actually adjust on this unit, which is very impressive. But specifically for changing the reversing camera settings, you just go to reversing camera settings. For me, I just had to switch to normal SD and then NTSC, and now the camera works perfectly. But if you wanna swap, the, or if you're installed an aftermarket camera or something like that, you can swap left to right or top to bottom. So if you installed it upside down or whatever way you installed it, you can basically make it work from here. And if you've installed an HD one, you can enable that as well, or, if you have the side cameras and the front camera, you can also have uh, the 360 view, which this you know car doesn't have. I might install it in the future, but it doesn't have it at the moment. So what does it look like? Well, let me go in reverse. And as you can see, it automatically switches to that. So now you can see the reverse camera being used. And if I move the steering wheel, it will, the lines move as well. You will also have to connect to the internet in order to activate the 360 app. So that's the app that popped up when we went in reverse. I use my phone's personal hotspot for this and that worked fine. Internet is not required for anything else after you are done activating that. But of course, if you wanna use uh, like the YouTube app or the Google Maps or uh, anything else in here or download different apps from the Play Store, you will need internet. Also, connecting to CarPlay is very simple. You connect your phone to Bluetooth on the Android device, so you just go in here, and then here you have the two phones that are connected at the moment, but basically you just connect it here, and then after that, what you would do is just go to uh, the Z-Link app, so you would just go to this app right here, and of course, I have my Bluetooth off at the moment, so my phone doesn't connect, so I'm recording with it, but it would automatically connect from here. And, and in the settings, you can adjust if you want it to auto-connect, so you can leave it so you have to go into the Z-Link app every time. Or what we have at the moment is just that it will auto-connect as soon as the unit is started. As soon as the car starts up, your phone connects to the Bluetooth, and then this app launches, and you are connected to uh, Apple CarPlay. Here's a few uh, other options you can change in this app as well. And yes, it is wireless. One thing I haven't figured out was how to remove this control panel uh, at the bottom as this will not control the HVAC on this car since this has manual controls for the HVAC. So here at the bottom, uh, it's just actual manual controls instead of using uh, electronic ones. Higher trim models have electronic controls and would work with this control panel at the bottom. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the quality of this unit and especially the display panel. It is easy to see in the sun and there isn't too much glare. Touchscreen feels very modern and operates smoothly between menus and apps. So you can swipe between like you would on your phone, which feels great. The head unit also integrates into the car's system. So you can control things like volume using the buttons on the steering wheel. You can also go into the car's original settings from the settings menu in case there's something to adjust there. 
Finally, I wanted to touch on the sound quality. The built-in amplifier is doing a great job and sounds more powerful than the original head unit. Music sounds clear and there is no hiss or noise even at higher volume. There are also many other things you can do on this head unit besides the CarPlay and Android Auto, especially if you insert the SIM card, but that's a whole video in itself. If you'd like to purchase this or a similar unit for your vehicle, check out the links in the description. Seikane makes units that fit your specific make and model, which makes integration much better. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.